What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm going to be showing you guys another dino deck profile. However, it's not your typical scrap dino builds. This is actually an OTK dino deck profile. Now, if you guys have been enjoying dino week where we're uploading five dino videos all in one week, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We do five videos every single week. It's not just Dino Week, but this week we're focused on the Dino stuff. But we also do product openings, combo videos, dual replays, vlogs, all that good stuff right here on the channel. So make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned into all of that. With that being said, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but keep in mind, this is a pure Dino OTK deck profile. It utilizes a lot of cards to help break your opponent's boards and then just go for games. So I hope you guys enjoy it with that. Let's get right into the deck profile. All right, so just before we get into today's video, I do want to preface this by saying some of the cards in this deck may be kind of expensive. So I'm going to give you guys budget alternatives as well. I will be discussing it throughout the video. However, this exact build of the deck is actually the way that I think is the best way to play the deck as a going second OTK deck right now. However, again, like I said, if you guys want budget alternatives, I will always give you guys that because I understand that some of these cards are hard and difficult to get your hands on. So I'm going to give you guys budget alternatives as well. With that being said, let's get right into it. We are starting off with three Soul Eating Oviraptor, of course, your best normal summon in the deck. We are playing two Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. Tyranno is your OTK button. I mean, I know I said it earlier already, but this is an OTK deck, and Conductor Tyranno lets you OTK. We're playing the one Miscellaneousaurus, of course, you can only play the one, and we're playing the two Baby Cerasaurus, as well as the one Petite Tyranodon. We're only playing the two Baby rather than the three because we're not playing the Scrap Engine in this. This is just a pure Dino OTK build, so for that reason, you don't actually need to max out on the Baby. And another cool thing, like I said in my last dino video if you guys haven't checked it out miscellaneous Horus is actually a little bit stronger in today's format the only reason i say that is because a lot of people are going to be actually off of dd crow which was one of the most popular hand shops for a while because of tier limits and people are actually going to be on the bestial package which actually doesn't hit the miscellaneous Horus. so this deck is a little bit less fragile now with the bestials coming into the format which is really really nice moving on with the dinos we are of course playing the one giant rex we're playing the one arcosol we're only playing one we're not playing two we don't want to draw it it is not bad if you draw it with a baby but because we cut baby down to two there's no reason to play two arcosaur it does still suck when you draw it yes don't get me wrong however you still want to play the one only because you really want to focus on playing going second cards that can actually help you otk and beat your opponent right so that's why we're playing the one arco we're playing the one pancratops of course as always as well as the one dogran a searchable kaiju is never a bad thing right so that's why we're playing the one dogran and then we're playing three fossil dig of course fossil dig is just a copy of any of the dino names in your deck which is really nice well of course not the tyrannal but you know anytime you need to get to an ov you'll get to an ov if you need to get to a baby you'll get to a baby same thing with miscellaneous right so fossil dig you have to play three of of course we're playing three lost world as well as one terraforming for it of course lost world is actually pretty good in today's format so i really really like it the fact that this says you can't target is actually really powerful especially with fenrir being very viable and that targets and a lot of cards in today's format unlike past formats actually target cards on the field so lost world does give you that protection and it makes it a little bit more difficult for your opponent to play plus the minus 500 attack and defense is really relevant especially because you're playing an otk deck and then we are playing the two double evolution pill this is pretty standard i would say nothing here i would change the dino engine as you guys can see is pretty small it's pretty compact it's pretty consistent the reason i say that is because you are playing some of the most broken going second cards in the game right now and so for that reason you really just want to make it the most consistent the most compact dino cards and then just flooding your deck with really powerful broken cards in today's format speaking of really powerful broken cards and speaking of a card that you wanted to protect yourself from we are playing three kashtira fenrir this card is insane it's basically Basically, your Pancratops, right? You special summon it if you control no monsters on the board. It's better than Pancratops because your opponent doesn't even have to have a monster, but you can special summon it, and then if your opponent activates a monster effect, right, on resolution, you can target a card on the field and banish it. Like, that's so nuts. It targets face up cards, of course, but the fact that it banishes is just so crazy so this card has to be a three of in this deck if you guys want to play this deck at the most powerful the most optimal level this card has to be a three of now i will say this though remember how earlier i was talking about giving you guys budget options that's because this card is probably the most expensive card not probably actually is the most expensive card in the deck at the moment this card is an insane value so for that reason if you guys want a more budget alternative to this you guys can actually just play more kaijus or better yet in my opinion play more bestial monsters speaking of bestial monsters we're playing three magnema as well as one druid worm druid worm is actually really good in this deck because it has an effect where if it's sent from the field to the graveyard you can target a special summon monster your opponent controls and you send it to the graveyard so the really cool thing about this deck because you're playing the otk version is you do go into link monsters pretty often so for that reason druid worm effect to send a card on your opponent's side of the field does come up pretty often and you can actually play more than just one of this the typical package is three and one however in a deck like this one if you're not playing fenrir's if you guys 
guys don't have access to Fenrir's, what you can do is actually max out on your Druid Worms, which is going to leave you with one more spot because two Fenrir's, let's say, become two more Druid Worms. And then this last spot could be another Kaiju, could be another board breaking kind of card. So I just wanted to give you guys that kind of option. Dark Hole is another option for you guys because if you open Baby plus Dark Hole, that could be a thing. Raigeki is also a thing. The problem with Dark Hole and Raigeki is they're just not great into the tier limit matchup. Otherwise, Dark Hole and Raigeki are not bad cards overall. So you guys can play that. So I wanted to give you guys some budget alternatives, but the Bistial package is really, really powerful in this deck. Just the fact that you can search the Druid Worm, just the fact that they act as hand traps for you is just really powerful. And then we're playing the one call by the Grave, so we don't get hit with hand traps. Of course, we have Miscellaneousaurus, but with only one miss, you do want to be playing the call by the Grave to protect yourself. And speaking of hand traps, we are playing three Ash Blossom. Ash Blossom is actually not very high impact in today's format. However, it's just the most generic hand trap in the game. So for that reason, you have to be playing it, right? I'm pretty sure it hits like 70% of the cards in the Yu-Gi-Oh game. Like that's, that's crazy. The fact that there's more than 10,000 cards printed and this hits like 7,000 of them mathematically. That's, that's just crazy to me. So for that reason, you have to be playing the three Ash. We're playing the three Droplets. Droplets is very relevant, not even for the effect negation effect, which is obviously a really good effect, but it's also really relevant because halving your opponent's monster's attack points could just straight up lead to you winning the game through Conductor Tyranno because Conductor Tyranno has that really cool effect where it can attack all monsters your opponent controls. So if all of your opponent's monsters are half attack points, then you're OTKing your opponent with Conductor. That's just crazy. So that's why we're playing the three Droplet. A lot of the time, keep in mind, Droplet is chainable when you activate your spell cards so if you activate terraforming you can just chain droplet send the terraforming to negate a monster your opponent controls and half its attack same thing with fossil dig same thing with your double evolution pill so just keep that in mind at all times you guys don't have to always send cards from your hands to the graveyard of course the really cool thing about droplet as well is if you have a tyranno in your graveyard and let's say you only have one dino in your graveyard you can always send another dino just so you have tyranno fodder which is really really nice as well so that's why we're playing the three droplet we're playing the one harpy's feather duster as well as the three lightning storms now i will say this lightning storm can be swapped with triple tactics talent triple tactics is actually really good into the tier limit matchup but the reason i really like lightning storm is because it deals with a lot of the back row that this deck otherwise doesn't deal with keep in mind with cards like your bestials with your fenrir these should help you to beat the tier limit matchup which is probably the best deck in the format right now these also help you beat the sprite matchup which is really relevant Relevant. but again there is runic sprite out there there's a lot of back row based decks if you're not playing tier limits or sprite a lot of the decks right now are floodgate based decks so for that reason having harpies and lightning storm is very very valuable in this deck so that's it for the deck we're rounding it off at 40 cards right here i think the deck is really really consistent you guys can see we play no draw cards but the reason for that is because you actually need access to your extra deck so playing extrav is tough playing prosperity is also tough because you're going to be doing half damage so you don't want to play prosperity and not be able to otk your opponent right so if you guys wanted to play draw cards you guys could but you would have to adjust your extra deck for it moving on to the extra deck we're playing one evolves our logia we're playing two evolves our dolka these cards are obviously really powerful especially when your opponent forces you to go first most of the time you're going to be going second in game ones anyways when you guys are building this deck if you guys want to take it to a locals or a regionals keep in mind you're going to be building your side deck for going first because your opponent most of the time might make you go first right so for that reason you just build your side deck to go first and dolka is just one of those cards that's really good going first same with logia we're playing the tornado dragon if we ever deal with back row matchups we're playing dweller because dweller if you can end on this and you're turn one it's very powerful against the tier limit matchup same thing with dugaris helps you otk we're playing the one wallow wallow is a card that you don't go into very often just because you're only playing four bisted monsters so for that reason you can actually play another rank four in here instead however the reason i think wallow is really cool is one if you choose not to play the fenrirs because you guys can't have access to them then you guys have access to more bisted monsters which means you can make wallow a lot easier and wallow is just a really really powerful card acting as a dd crow for you which is really good against a lot of tier limit matchups but it's also really good against sprite matchups because if you hit the card they want to summon off elf then they're kind of in a weird position right so that's why we're playing the one wallow we're playing the link karibo as well as secure gardener there's a combo where you need this to otk specifically because you need the non-dino in the graveyard for your double evolution pill the really cool thing about this deck though as well is because you're playing the ash because you're playing the fenrirs because you're playing the bisted monsters you can get non-dinos in the graveyard pretty easily but these cards just help you do that even easier right one pentastag of course to help you otk one ip mascarena this is when you're forced to go first you're playing the phoenix as well as the unicorn again you're playing a decent amount of link monsters in this deck which is really nice because that's how you're going to trigger cards like your druid worm to essentially send cards your opponent controls to the graveyard so being able to link a druid worm plus like any dino to go into phoenix to pop a card and the druid worm is going to pop another card is very very powerful in that sense unicorn is also in here because you can make access code talker access code talker is of course really good in otking your opponent and then you're playing the one apple mostly for when you're forced to go first when you are forced to go first you do try to end on ip mascarina with a couple monsters on your side of the field because ip mascarina is going to either get you into unicorn or into your apollo so that's it for the deck 
deck profile. I hope I explained it well for you guys. I really wanted to let you guys know why we're playing the deck the way we are. Again, you're minimalizing the dino package in this deck because you really just want to focus on being able to go second and break your opponent's boards. These cards over here, like your Fenrir, your Bistials, your Storms, your Droplets, it really helps you do that. And then you're always going to rely on your dino package for the OTK. So keep that in mind. Dino package, OTK. Non-dino package, break your opponent's boards or force them essentially to not make boards. So that's it for the deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed and I think you guys should try this deck out yourself. I know Fenrir is kind of expensive, but maybe try out some of the more budget cards that I told you guys about earlier. Try out more Bistials, try out more Kaijus because at the end of the day, if you can break your opponent's board, you're going to be able to OTK. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That was my take on OTK Dino for today's format. I think this deck is very, very powerful. I think it's the most competitive way to play OTK Dino. However, like I said, if you guys need budget options for some of the most expensive cards, you guys can go ahead and do that. It's not a big issue. Now, if you guys have any suggestions, let me know in the comment section down below. That's how we get better together as a community because honestly, Spanko is not just me. I mean, I am Spanko, but Spanko is a community and I want to get better together. I want to grow together. You guys mean the most to me. I hope you guys did enjoy. Make sure you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. We're almost at 7,500 subscribers. The goal for the end of 2022 was 7,500 and we're almost there. So I can't thank you guys enough from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate every single one of you with that. Spanko signing out. Peace.